Two months ago, Redbubble changed everything. But since that massive change, they have been doing everything they possibly can to claw their way back. Let's see if they've succeeded. Well, what happened two months ago? Two months ago, Redbubble introduced tears. This, so they say, was to slow down all the copyright infringements, the tag spamming, and just the general rubbish designs on their platform, even though they didn't quite specifically say that last one, we all knew what they meant. Now, this is what they said the tears were there for. Did they succeed with their big plan? At the end of the day, they were aiming for a better platform for both sellers and buyers. Well, stay to the end because I'm going to be sharing a really cool metric that isn't freely available to everyone and you're gonna wanna see this. Let's start from the beginning, Redbubble as a company. Now, Redbubble is a public company, which means it has a share price. And since this massive change, the share price hasn't actually changed very much. It started two months ago at around 40 cents in Australian dollars, and now it's around 38 cents in Australian dollars. So, yeah, not the biggest drop. During that two months, there was a phase where it dropped all the way down to 31 cents, and that was its biggest drop. However, if we zoom out of the company and we have a look at it as a whole, we can see it's been going down since January of 2021. But this isn't really a fair judgment of the company, because if we have a look at 2020, we can see a huge spike due to COVID. As COVID eased up, it looks like the company has just collapsed. But in reality, it's actually only slightly lower than it was before COVID. If we remove this giant mountain in the middle, which was COVID, we can see that the drop isn't actually that bad. And at its peak before COVID, it was at $1.91. So the fact that it's gone down, yes, it, it's gone down quite a lot, but it only looks really bad when we put COVID in the picture. Despite all the recent changes and everything they're doing to fix their company, it doesn't seem like anything is actually working. So that's the share price. Now let's have a look at the actual website and see if that's improved. The website as a whole pretty much looks the same. As I dug a little bit deeper, I found this page fan art. Now, this did exist beforehand. However, it seems like they have grown this element of their business. And fan art is actually really cool because it allows people like you and me to create art for famous movies, famous TV shows, famous bands. And it's a lot easier to sell a Stranger Things t-shirt because it has all of that popularity than it is to sell, I don't know, one of our own random cycling t-shirts. But moving on to the next issue, copyright infringement. Did this change in tiers allow them to fix it? It doesn't look like any headway was made. If I search for Barbie, as that is coming to the cinema, we'll see a whole plethora of designs that are infringing on Barbie. If I search for Oppenheimer, also, a movie coming to the cinema will see the same thing. And for some very odd reason, Barbie and Oppenheimer have been conjoined to create this weird Barbenheimer trend on Redbubble. And it's actually trending on Redbubble. So it's like Redbubble aren't even trying to fix this copyright infringement issue. So all I'm going to say is please don't attempt to sell in either of these two niches because you'll probably get sued by both Mattel and Universal, which are the studio houses that actually created these movies. As well as that, it's just clearly stealing and at some point it's going to catch up with Redbubble. They've had quite a few lawsuits in the past and it wouldn't surprise me if there are many more lawsuits to come. How they haven't fixed this problem baffles me. Now let's move on to the next issue that they were planning to fix, tag spamming. From what I can see, this has actually been cleared up quite a bit. I was browsing on the platform for over half an hour trying to find 
designs that were using tag spamming as a tactic to get sales. And I couldn't find anything. During my 30 minutes of trying to find some tag spammers, I ended up finding a lot more copyright infringements. And I mean a lot more copyright infringements. So two months later, has the introduction of tears on Redbubble changed anything? Well, some sellers are actually reporting higher sales since the change, more views, more likes, all of these kind of things. However, due to Redbubble actually taking more money from you, unless you're on one of the higher tiers, sellers who are reporting more sales aren't actually making any more money because they're now giving more to Redbubble. So it hasn't actually benefited that many people. For all I know, it could just need a little longer. It's only been two months at the end of the day, and I would love to give Redbubble the benefit of the doubt. So I will for sure be making an update video in 10 months time, which would have been a year, just to see what has happened on the platform and if they've come through with all of their promises. For the second last metric, this is one of the most important metrics, and this alone shows us the direction that Redbubble is heading in. Site traffic and site traffic change over time. Back in December of 2020, Redbubble was getting around 45 million visitors every single month. That is a hell of a lot of people going to Redbubble. Now, if we have a look at their website traffic, it's nearly halved. I understand that was two and a half years ago, but you would hope that in two and a half years, the traffic goes up and they're doing more things and they're getting more customers. To me, what this shows is people have come to the platform to buy. They haven't been happy with Redbubble, with the quality, with the customer service, with anything, and they haven't returned. And no shop, no platform, no one can survive if you don't get repeat customers. And now let's have a look in April, May and June. Well, in April, they got 25.1 million visitors. In May, they got 24.5. And in June, they got 24.2 million visitors. So they're going down every single month. And it wouldn't surprise me if they went down to 15 million visitors a month, 10 million, 5 million. None of this would surprise me because I don't understand why anyone would ever buy something on Redbubble and then go back or recommend it to a friend. On top of all of this, because clearly this wasn't bad enough, Redbubble actually increased the price of their base classic t-shirt. Now it was $17.68 around three months ago. It's now sitting at $20.48. That's a $2.80 loss every single time that you sell something. That is a serious loss for a lot of people who for some were only making $5 margins anyways. And now what? That margin has gone in half. $2.80 is a lot of money. And if you're in the standard tier, you're actually giving Redbubble money every single time you make a sale. So you're making even less. Does this information confirm anything for me? Does it change my mind about how I felt with Redbubble? No. Not really. I still think they're an overpriced print-on-demand company. I still think that they are scamming customers by selling terrible quality items for an extortionate amount of money. And I think they are scamming sellers by just decreasing their margins even more and not fulfilling on promises that they said they were going to do by introducing these tiers. Quite frankly, I don't understand why anyone who cares about their customer, who cares about their product, would use Redbubble. If you are just in it to make money and you don't care, then yeah, I guess upload thousands and thousands and thousands of designs to Redbubble and see what happens. Maybe you'll get $50 a month. Maybe you'll get $100 a month. Who knows? But like, I don't know. I don't think that's ethical because the people receiving those products they're not lasting, uh, they're, not, they're not good products, they're not happy customers, and I, I, I wouldn't feel right doing that, you know? And I don't see why anyone should when there are so many 
other platforms out there that you can use. Now, if you are thinking, well, Shimmy, what other platforms are there? Like, you're not telling me any other platforms. Well, no, there's quite a few. And I would say check this video out next, where I actually go through so many different platforms that all have a marketplace that will get you organic sales. So check that video out to see Redbubble alternatives.